Hello, listeners, and welcome to Youth Ventures Podcast, PDX Business Spotlight. everyone and welcome back to this episode of PDX Business Spotlight. Today we're here with Beatrice who's the owner of Bumble Bath Soap. So Beatrice, could you please go ahead and give an overview of who you are, what your business is about, and how you got started? Yeah, hi. Thanks for having me. So I'm Beatrice. I grew up in Chicago, Illinois, and I moved here about six years ago. And I started working as a professional chef. And then I lost my job due to the pandemic. And that led me into what I'm doing now, which is I have a small business and I make soaps, bath bombs, self-care products, and I do like markets around Portland and I'm in some stores around Portland. And that's kind of, that's kind of where I'm at now. Wow, that's great. B, who or what inspired you to start your business? Well, you know, I was on lockdown like all of us were in 2020. And Mm -hmm. we were already, when I say we, I mean my husband and I, we were already making soaps and things just as a hobby, kind of as our little fun thing to do on our day off from work. And then Mm -hmm. as a way to connect with my friends and family, when I couldn't see them in person, I would, you know, give them soaps and little gifts and things that I was making just as a kind of way to say, you know, I'm thinking of you. And then everyone in my life was like, you know, I think you should, I think you should do this. I think you should start a business and sell this and, you know, kind of share this with everyone. And I really didn't believe in myself at first because, you know, I have this kitchen background and this chef Mm -hmm. background and that had been my entire life. And so I was like, I'm not a business person. I don't know how to run a business, you know, but then I just said, you know what, I'm, I, I need to make money and I need to keep myself busy. So why not? And so I just made an Instagram page and kind of just it snowballed from there, honestly. Wow. I think it's really interesting how, first of all, like what started out as a hobby became into like such a beautiful business. And I truly love how you followed your passion throughout and really like kind of followed your dreams. Also, it's really amazing how much family support you had because I do know there's often members of the family or like friends and relatives that don't always support every single decision. But it seems like your family really had like a lot of input and a lot of like continuous support throughout. Yeah, I think, you know, 2020 showed a lot of us that, you know, life can be different. We can, you know, pursue different things, even in a time of, you know, unprecedented things and scary things happening. There's Mm -hmm. still a place for art. There's still a place to be creative. And I think, honestly, that making this business into a reality during that time is what kept me sane and kept me happy and kept me motivated because I did I did go through a big identity crisis you know when I was sent home from my job and and they were like that's it you know I've been working tirelessly you know 60 hours a week in the kitchen you know creating dishes and connecting with customers and connecting with my community and then I was just cut off from all of that and it's like well who am I now what do I do now and so I think my soap making and you know self-care products that I create for folks it's it's similar to cooking in a lot of ways so I just in my mind I'm still you know technically a chef but I just have a different medium now (laughs) Mm -hmm. B, as you may know, the pandemic definitely did play a huge impact on everyone's lives, including yours. And it did definitely impact businesses a lot. One interesting that you mentioned was that you actually started your business during the pandemic. So how has the pandemic kind of impacted the start and like like the duration of your business? Like, has it had more upsides or downsides? I think it's been a mix of both, honestly, you know, Mm -hmm. in the in the beginning, I was doing a lot of online things, you know, because it wasn't safe for me to to go out to stores and pitch my product. And Uh and then as things got a little bit safer, and things were opening up, and we were okay to be around each other with masks on and things, Mm -hmm. I was able to do, you know, these outdoor pop up markets where I got, you know, a 10 by 10 tent and set up a table and a whole display. And then people got to know who I 
I was and I got to connect with people again, which was so nice. And yeah. then I think because people liked hearing my story about how I, you know, took this terrible thing that happened to me and, and followed my passions and mm-hmm. wanted to, you know, keep going with this business. I think people hearing that story, they wanted to, you know, elevate me. There's there's such a beautiful maker and artist community here in Portland, which I'm really fortunate to have. And I think, you know, once I kind of started to meet the right people and telling people my story, they just opened the doors for me and the doors just continue to open it. And I'm just so, I feel so grateful for that. It has been, I would say, some downsides. It's been difficult, I feel like, to kind of break into stores right now because Mm -hmm. a lot of stores don't want to take a risk of buying too much inventory because they're not sure, are people going to come into my store? Are people going to buy these things? So that's where I've had a little bit of difficulty but I I'm still persistent and I there are a few stores who I do have accounts with and I'm grateful for them but you know I'm always hoping to do more and always hoping to expand my business right and so I see I see the end you know of this um, people being weary about investing in new businesses um, I, I think I think you know now that things are being opened up again and it's safer and we have vaccines you know maybe I could break into a hotel and have my products in a hotel or you know Airbnbs or something like that. B, I definitely do love how, first of all, you definitely faced a lot of struggles while opening your business and before and during your business. But I love how you truly did like persevere throughout like all of those struggles and you were able to become the owner of such a successful business and like get through all of those struggles to reach this point and I also love how you were really like welcomed into the BIPOC owned business community I do know that the community is like really welcoming and I love that you were easily able to become a part of that yeah I don't think I would be where I am today without the people that I've met along the way, you know, because you you get these people in your circle and then they tell you, hey, have you checked out, you know, this market or hey, I did really well, you know, in this store, maybe you should go check it out. And so I... I really listen to and get all the advice that I possibly can because I am so new to this. And I I think it's really beautiful that people are willing to share, you know, their stories and share advice with me because one thing we all like to say, I think, in, in the circles are it's it's community over competition. You know, that's kind of that's kind of the slogan I think that everybody says and they really take it to heart, you know. Definitely. B, how has being a person of color affected your business, either positively or negatively? Yes, I mean, this is this is a really interesting part of the, you know, interview because coming from Chicago, where it's so diverse and, you know, a, a melting pot, if you would, mm-hmm. I never really, I never really saw myself as being different than anyone. You know, <laughs> I was just another, another brown girl in the sea of brown people and black people and you know, all different shades of people. And so when I moved out here, it was a really big culture shock for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people want to celebrate me and amplify my voice because I am a person of color. And I think that's really great. But it's it's something that I'm not really used to. And, you know, when I participate in these markets, some some offer, you know, a discount for people of color, which is great because sometimes boost fees can be expensive. And so mm-hmm. to get that little discount is great. My people's market is a market that only, you know, has vendors of color and makers of color, which I think is a beautiful space for for our community, you know, to have that and to let people know, hey, when you come shop here, you're only, you know, going to be supporting people of color. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I don't think there's been any negatives to it. I've, I've felt nothing but, you know, a sense of community and people wanting to help amplify my voice and give me breaks and you know push me to the front of the line if you will which is it feels it feels nice sometimes you know to have Mm -hmm. that you know to be recognized for that because in this world sometimes you feel like you know you don't get those things and I do know that the BIPOC owned business community especially is just so welcoming and I've been to the My People markets and all of the BIPOC markets and like I definitely see like a huge like sense of community within all of the business owners. It's truly magical to be in them. Mm-hmm. I agree. And B, 
This might be a bit of a difficult question, but mm-hmm. what is one of your favorite products that you sell? Well, I have eczema. And so this was kind of the reason why I wanted to make my own soap and things mm-hmm. because I just, everything I was getting from the stores was just breaking me out or giving me rash or just leaving me dry. And so I would say I've really fallen in love with my goat milk soap because Mm -hmm. it's the only thing that's really helped heal my eczema. And I also make CBD bath bombs, which are great for people like me who stand all day long, you know, and I have a lot of like soreness in my back and soreness in my knees. So I'll just take a CBD bath and treat myself to that. I I know it is a hard question. I have so many that I like, but I think those would be the two standouts. And I'm always coming up with with new things. Like I've been making laundry soap for years for the same reason, because I'm so sensitive. And so I just started selling my laundry soap now too, for for folks who are just like me, who, who can't find a good alternative to what's in the grocery store store so definitely to all the listeners out there if you want to check out the products that b just mentioned you can go to the link in our podcast description box of wherever you're listening and you can go to her website where you can shop all of those products also b kind of similar on the products that we were talking about what Mm -hmm. are some of the ingredients that you use to like create your products and what are some of their benefits Right. So I spoke a little bit about the goat milk soap and Mm. goat milk is like super rich in you know, lots of different vitamins that are nourishing for your skin. Not only does it help with eczema, but it also helps, you know, if you have acne, there's, it's been said that goat milk has anti-aging properties Mm -hmm. and, and things like that. And then I really pride myself on using all natural locally sourced ingredients. So like, Mm. for example, I get a lot of of my bulk ingredients from Shea and Company, which is right here in Milwaukee, Oregon, just like right outside Portland, basically. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I try not to use any harsh chemicals or ingredients. I use a lot of dried flowers that I get from House of Spain, which is also a local Portland company that has beautiful dried herbs and flowers otherwise you know now that spring is is here and summer's here i like to go foraging for my own flowers and herbs sometimes too and dehydrate them myself and i'll put those on top of the bath bombs and then yeah mostly mostly just all really good nourishing things for your skin wow and along with that b i also really do appreciate how along with like creating your products you're supporting local vendors on the way to like buy ingredients to create your product yeah, that that's a big part of my message. I mm-hmm. love, you know, especially now that I am a small local business, I always love supporting other small local businesses as well. And I would say another big thing that goes along with my company is I don't like to use a lot of plastic. Mm-hmm. So that it is, you know, environmentally, you know, friendly. So you'll get things in, in recycled brown paper boxes or, you know, glass or no packaging at all. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, I try to I try to be conscious of those things for sure. Wow, I really do love your message and your continuous support towards supporting local businesses and towards keeping your packaging sustainable and everything about mm-hmm. your business sustainable. Mm-hmm. And B, what advice do you have for young entrepreneurs, especially young entrepreneurs of color? And what are some experiences you could talk about that might motivate or inspire them? Right. I would say if you really, if you really want to be, you know, a business owner or run something yourself or be in charge of, you know, your life in that way, just get out there and and talk to people that are already doing what you want to do and ask them a million questions. Try to maybe get a little quick one day you know behind the scenes look of what they're doing like go to their workshop or go to their office and see if you could just shadow them for a day I mean I that's basically if I could speak to what I was talking about like being a chef and things like that Mm -hmm. when I was young I would try to go to restaurants and see if I could just work there for a day and learn from them for a day and then like I went to culinary school and stuff like that but as far as being like a business owner, there's so many, I feel like workshops and things that you can be a part of as a young person mm-hmm. to to get yourself on that path. And I mean, I, I just kind of taught myself, honestly, I just read a lot of books and watched things on YouTube, tried to find things that were free, you know, to teach myself. But yeah, 
you can definitely talk to, I feel like, people who are already doing what you want to do, and that would be a good place to start. Mm -hmm. And then meet people at markets, go to these markets, go, you know, ask them, hey, how did you get into this market kind of thing? And don't give up, you know, even even if people tell you it's a crazy idea or there's somebody else who's already doing that thing, you're not the one doing that thing. You'll bring something special to that thing that even if it's something you already saw on Instagram or Facebook that a hundred other people are doing, you are the person that's going to make it special and people are going to want to buy it from you because they could tell that you put your heart and your soul into it. And so you just have to really, I think, believe in yourself and just block out all the other noise and mm -hmm. try to find other people in your community who, who want to help you get there. Wow, definitely some really great pieces of advice for all of the young entrepreneurs out there. So thank you so much for that, B. Yeah, you're welcome. And B, how can people support your business? Great. Well, you kind of already mentioned my website and that would be, you know, the direct way to get things from me. But... Also, there is a list on my website of the stores that I sell my products in. It's not a full selection in those stores, just a few things here and there. But now, if you want to do something fun for the spring or summer, you can also come to all the markets that I'm at around Portland. And on my website, you can find under the events tab, it'll list every single market that I'm going to be at up until October. I booked myself oh. for a whole year of markets. <laughs> Oh my goodness, so crazy. But yeah, so we'll be at St. John's Farmer's Market. We'll be at like Second Sunday Flea, which is in the parking lot of Urbanite. A lot of good markets, the Portland Night Market, all the big ones that wow. people love to go to. <laughs> So definitely, listeners, we will also include the direct tab to B's events page so you can check out the dates and the timings of all the markets. We'll also include the vendors she's at. So if you want to go in person and shop for her products, you can also do that as well. Additionally, you can also support B on social media and we will also include all of her social media links in the podcast description box as well. B, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of our podcast. Are there any special projects or anything else you would like to plug? Well, tomorrow I'm going to be at a market, but I think that'll be too late by the time this comes out. So <laughs> <laughs> I would say just keep following along on our Instagram and our website. We're always doing really fun new things. I just put my shampoo bars out on my website, which is, you know, really good low waste alternative to buying shampoos and plastic bottles. And yeah, I would just say just keep checking checking out my website and always you could always feel free to dm me on instagram or email me if there's something on my website you have questions about or if you want to see different new products from me i'm always open for suggestions of course thank you so much b is there any final words that you wanted to say or anything else you would like to add no just thank you so much for having me and you know if you have a crazy idea that you just really are passionate about just go for it because you never know where it could take you of course thank you so much b it was truly an honor to interview you and to spotlight your story that is it from pdx business spotlight and listeners please be sure to join us in the next episode thank you for listening to pdx business spotlight by youth venture and we hope to see you in the next episode